As All Hallows' Eve is almost upon us, celebrate all things horror with Parcast Presents Halloween. This new podcast series on Spotify brings you three chilling episodes each week in October. From urban legends to haunted places, Parcast Presents Halloween takes you on a historical tour of terror. Hear the stories of an escaped killer on the prowl, a gruesome discovery by four young friends, the legendary killings of Salem's first witches, and much more. Search for Parcast Presents Halloween in the Spotify app and start listening for free. When I was 17 or 18-ish, I was driving home from a friend's house after a movie marathon. It was around 1am when I left and a decent drive. And not quite halfway though, my gas light came on. Now, I've had a few creepy catcall experiences at gas stations and was a little paranoid stopping that late in the middle of nowhere as a 110 pound teenage girl. In the end, I think if I wasn't so cautious, I actually would have been kidnapped or even killed. The first gas station I came across was well lit and in a pretty open space. I drove up to the pump and I looked around my car mirrors before getting out. As I was starting to pump gas, this normal looking guy comes out of the gas station shop and starts smoking a cigarette. The pump kept clicking off and not working so I started messing with it trying to get it to pump. This guy starts watching me and he begins laughing. I assumed that he was just laughing to himself watching a teenage girl trying to pump gas and after getting maybe a, a quarter of a gallon, I think, I just gave up and I moved to a new pump. And after this point, if I didn't do absolutely everything that I did, I would have been screwed for sure. But when I got back into my car, I locked my doors just to drive to the other pump. I checked all of my mirrors before getting out or shutting off my car again, an old 90s beetle that didn't always start right away. And that was when I saw the guy walking up to my car. He was smiling, walking up to the driver's side window. Not wanting him next to me, I rolled down the passenger window. He paused for a moment, then smiled to himself and walked to the passenger side. He then stuck his head all the way inside my window to talk to me, and he said, Hey, I know this seems a little weird, but uh, I promise I'm not a creep or anything. My car broke down, points to red SUV, and I need a ride home. It's just a half mile up the road that way. I say, uh, sorry, but, uh, I don't know you. He says, oh, uh, nah, I, I totally get it. I, I thought it was pretty weird as I was walking up here, but it's only half a mile up the road and I'm just totally stranded. I say, I wish I could help you, honestly, but I really don't know you. Sorry. He says, yeah, yeah, I got you. If you had a truck or something, I'd offer a ride at the back. Looks expected. I say again, uh, sorry, but no. And all of a sudden, he looks pissed. He yanked at my door, but I had it locked before. Then he reached for my side of the door handle through the window. But my car was still running and I slammed it into first and I just peeled out as he opened the door. Luckily, the car taking off slammed it shut and he fell off and I sped off. I called the police after I got away and they looked at the gas station cameras and right after I left, he got into his red SUV and drove off. If I hadn't have locked my doors the second time, I would have been screwed. If I let him come to the driver's side window, he would have grabbed me. If I had shut my car off, I wouldn't have been able to drive off in time. And if I didn't double check my mirrors, I would have been outside my car when he came up to me. When I was in high school, I was good friends with a girl called Emma. Emma was kind of quiet and shy, but always was there if he needed her. When I finished high school, though, I lost touch with Emma, as what happens to a lot of friendships after school. Two years later in college, though, I started dating a guy called Ben, and Ben's best friend, Gary, was Emma's boyfriend. After discovering that we all knew each other, we started to hang out again. One of the nights we planned to all hang out in Gary's house, have a few drinks and play a few games. Myself and Ben showed up at about 8pm to Gary's house and Gary said Emma should be over soon. 
And that was fine. I mean, we opened our beers and started drinking. I mean, it was nearly 9 p.m. and Emma still wasn't here, so we decided to ring her. Emma answered and apologized for being late. She said that she was just finishing up getting ready and should be there soon. At 9.30 p.m., there was still no sign of Emma, so we called again. This time, her younger brother picked up the phone. Her brother was 15 years old at the time and had told us that Emma was not feeling that well and was in the bathroom. Gary was worried and asked if he could head over and check on her, but her brother was adamant that he was looking after Emma and she was alright and to enjoy our night. Well, we didn't go home and instead we just kept drinking and hanging out because well, we thought Emma was just had the simple flu or something. Just after 10pm, we decided to call one last time and check up on Emma. Again, her brother answers and calmly told us that Emma had gone to bed and she'll call us in the morning. We left it at that, believing that she was safe at home in bed and we didn't want to annoy her brother by non-stop calling. But that night, Emma's mum returned home at 12am to find Emma dead on the kitchen floor. Emma had been bludgeoned to death by her younger brother a couple of hours earlier. We later found out that when Emma was leaving to come to us, she and her brother got into a fight about something ridiculous, and he beat her with a baseball bat and then stabbed her over 51 times. Since her brother was a minor, he wasn't going to get sent to prison. Instead, her brother pleaded insanity and was sent to an institution. A lot of this information was not leaked as the accused was a minor, but I do know that his parents stuck by him and he was released after four years. This happened about eight years ago and I've never told this story in its entirety. So I was hanging out with one of my female friends one night and we decided to go for a walk to a nearby park. We had a bottle of spiced rum that we planned on drinking once we got there, but we ended up having some on the way. But the walk to the park was about two to three miles from where we started, and it took us a little over half an hour to get there. It was around 7pm early fall in Minnesota, so it had started getting dark when we got to the park. We're talking and drinking and messing around on the park equipment for a little while before we decide to go and sit on one of the benches that they have there. It's getting a little later at this point, and a little bit cold too when the sun was setting, so we just huddled up on the bench and continued drinking and just talking for another good hour. The sun finally sets, and we're just having a casual conversation about who knows what, when we start hearing this low hum. Neither of us thought too much about it, thinking that it was just construction or traffic or whatever seeing as we're in a public park in a very populated part of town with houses within throwing distance in any direction. So we ignored it and continued our conversation as it got darker. And we didn't really have a plan for what we were going to do after this, opting to see where the night would take us. But here is where it starts getting weird. So as we were just chilling on the bench, we were facing an open baseball field with minimal fencing. It's dark by now and as we're talking... We start hearing the low hum again, but this time it's louder and we can kind of hear which direction that it's coming from. We both stop and look across the field and we see what looks like a, a shadow. We sit there and watch it for a second as it kind of sways, thinking maybe it's a, a person or something. About 30 seconds pass and this thing starts getting larger and closer as well. We're freaking out now because this black mass is probably about 12 feet tall and maybe 6 feet across, and it's coming right towards us. It gets maybe within 20 yards of us, and then just nothing. I had blacked out, waking up the next morning on the porch of my mother's house about a mile away from where we were. I had a terrible headache too, although that might have just been from the rum. My mum is freaking out asking why I have cuts and bruises everywhere, thinking that I got into a fight or something. I told her though that I had no idea. I sat there for a couple of hours just trying to recollect my night, trying to figure out what the hell happened, and then I get a call from the friend that I was with. She was in the hospital with a broken wrist and a few scrapes. She asked me what happened and I didn't have an answer. She told me that she didn't remember anything after the low hum and woke up at the hospital. 
To this day, I have no idea what actually happened that night. I have since lost contact with that friend that I was with, but last time I talked to her, she had no more answers than I did. I would love to know if anyone has had anything similar happen to them. Oh, and uh, if anyone is interested in where this happened, look up Cavell Park in northeast Minneapolis, Minnesota. I haven't heard of anything else happening in this area, so I don't have anything to go on, and right now I'm just looking for some answers. It was my turn to take my kids trick-or-treating. The previous year it was my wife's, and we trade back and forth every year. My son and daughter are age 7 and 9. Usually I just stay on the street while my kids go up to different houses to collect candy, but after about half an hour of walking around, we come to one of the more popular hotspots for candy collecting, a main street in the neighborhood, lots of really cool decorations and animatronics on people's lawns and whatnot, so I became a bit distracted and stopped watching my kids closely. At one point, they came back from a house accompanied by another girl about the same height as my daughter, she was wearing a, a weird homemade mask, like a cardboard cutout or something. My daughter asked me if she could trick or treat with us, so I said sure, and we carried on together as a group. I didn't know who this girl was, but I figured that she was a friend from school or something. As we continued, I started to notice a large man trailing us, though. He was wearing some sort of a, an angry cat mask. It was kind of creepy to be honest, but I thought that maybe he was the father of the girl, so I tried to start up some small chat with him. I said something like, nice weather, hey, but he just didn't respond. He just kind of stood there, staring at me, while our kids went up the stairs to the next house. I tried again, asking, hey, is uh, that your daughter? He nodded, but didn't say anything. I figured that he just wasn't in the mood for chatting, so I stopped trying. We carried on for about another 15 minutes until suddenly my kids came up to me and said that they wanted to go home. This surprised me as we hadn't been out for too long and their bags were only really about a third full. In any case, I agreed and waved goodbye at the man in the cat mask and his daughter and started on our way home. The weird thing is that when I glanced back, the man and his daughter were just standing there staring at us. I checked one more time as we turned the corner and they were still standing there, just not having moved at all. At this point, I decided to ask my kids, so who was that girl? My daughter looked up at me with a confused look on her face and she said, she's your friend. I asked her what she meant and apparently the girl with the cardboard mask approached them and said that she was a friend of mine. She told my daughter that she was too shy to ask me if she could join us to trick or treat and wanted my daughter to ask me instead. I laughed at this story and replied to my daughter, why would you think that she was my friend? I don't have any children friends. And what my daughter said next chilled my bones. According to her, when the girl with the cardboard mask approached them for the first time, she wasn't wearing the mask so they were actually able to see her face. As it turns out, she wasn't a girl at all, but an older woman around my age with wrinkles on her face. What's even more disturbing though is that the old woman had started to steal treats from my daughter's bag, apparently when I wasn't looking, and this is why they asked me to go home. The old woman was apparently creeping them out and they just wanted to get away from her and I brought my kids home and told my wife what happened. We made sure to check through all the candy, but didn't find anything suspicious or off. We didn't call the police or anything since nothing really happened, but thinking back, I kind of regret that decision now. I mean, what the heck was that old woman doing? And who the hell was that man that was following us around? I don't think I'll ever know, but I just think that it's sick that there are people out there on Halloween hiding behind masks, pretending to be children, and just doing weird things like this. I lived in an old house as a kid until I was eight. It's like 110 years old by now, but my parents told me the ghost started appearing after I was born. My crib was in their bedroom. My mum would wake up to him giggling and cooing a lot like I was playing with someone. 
Other times I'd be sound asleep, but my crib would be rocking back and forth, and on three separate occasions, she said that she saw a woman in a nice white dress standing over my crib. My dad frequently saw her going up or down the spiral staircase that led to the room upstairs, or just standing at the top of them near the balcony looking down at him while he watched TV. When I asked my sister about it, she was reluctant to talk about it, but she said that she'd actually seen her. We also heard footsteps in the attic that would stop the second a light was turned on, and my dad investigated a few times, but never found anything. Except that sometimes the attic light was on when he was absolutely positive that it was off when he went to sleep. You could see the light from under the doorway. I only really remember seeing her once, but that's another story entirely. I just sort of chalked it up as something weird my whole family experienced, and never really thought about it much after we moved. None of us ever had a bad vibe from her, and she wasn't scary, so we lived with it for about eight years. So, flash forward to me being a freshman in high school, I'm in earth science class talking to a girl that I thought was cute. It got to the, so where do you live around here, part of the conversation, and she said, Old Town and the town name near the railroad tracks. And I said, oh really, that's neat, I used to live in Old Town too, on so and so street. She says, really? And that's where I live. The white one with the green shutters. And I was like, no way. I'm kind of amazed and I say, with the plum tree out front and the white picket fence with the shed in the backyard? She nods and I ask her, have you seen her? And I kid you not, her response sent a chill down my spine and immediately I had goosebumps. She says... You mean the lady in the white dress? Yeah. I was floored. I just kept thinking, it's like a double blind study. There's no way that she could have known what I meant. And she gave me an accurate description when I didn't even say the word ghost or anything. But I can tell you that it honestly changed me after that day. I went from being a, a sort of a jock kid who wore American Eagle stuff, when it was cool for you youngsters, to listening to Black Sabbath and Pink Floyd. And quite frankly, my whole attitude on life just changed. I became a lot more relaxed and was open to new ideas, whereas I had a this is what's real and this is what isn't kind of attitude beforehand. There is a little more to this story because obviously we spoke a bit, but I'll leave that for another post. And for now, I hope you enjoyed that story. It happened a couple of years ago when I was living abroad. I had just got off the night shift and was waiting at the bus stop at around 6am. It was just starting to get bright out and the area that I worked in was the party city in this country so it was pretty crowded with people just finishing their nights out. I noticed a girl who was pretty drunk just sitting at the door of the shop beside the bus stop. Some guy was with her and had his arm around her shoulders but I could tell that something just wasn't right but to anyone passing by and not paying attention, they would easily have passed as just a couple. I tried to act casual and I sat beside them and pretended to be looking at my phone while trying to assess the situation. He nodded at me and tightened his grip on her and started to whisper in her ear. The girl looked really uncomfortable, but she was also too drunk to actually move away or say anything. as She was heavily slurring her words. This went on for a couple more minutes, he was whispering in her ear as well and constantly surveying the area, smiling to himself that nobody seemed to have noticed. I had about four minutes until the bus came and that bad feeling in my stomach was growing worse so I said screw it, I need to do something now. I leaned over to the girl and I said, hey is this your boyfriend? The man stared me down and said yes but I ignored his glare and I asked the girl again. And at this, she started crying and shook her head no. I asked her if she knew him or ever met him. Again, she shook her head and said no. The man became visibly frustrated and insisted that they knew each other. I asked the girl if she was going to my area. She nodded yes. So I told her that I would bring her there and I lifted her up. At this point, the dude rolled his eyes and started cursing at me. I held his gaze, but I was terrified on the inside because he could have got on the bus and followed us. Thankfully, though, when the bus pulled up, he just turned and walked away. 
I'm guessing this was because a few people were now there waiting to get on and he didn't want to cause a scene. I sat beside the girl on the bus which was about a 20 minute drive. She was still quite drunk and slurring her words at this stage but from what I could piece together she had lost her friends and her phone died and this man started talking to her when she left the club to find them and he kept insisting on bringing her to his house. When we got to our stop I walked her home and made sure that she got in okay and she asked me to take a number so that she could talk to me when she was sober. We chatted a few times since then, but she said that she was extremely thankful that I had noticed something was up. Because apparently, when she left the club, she was stumbling about, and this guy came out of nowhere and started offering help to her, putting his arm around her so that she could walk, etc. He was telling her things like he was going to take her back to his house and have fun with her. She said that she was terrified, but too drunk to get the words out to call for help. When I had sat beside them too, I noticed that he was whispering in her ear to shut up and not say anything. It's also worth noting too that this guy was 100% sober, which means that this wasn't just a drunk person trying to get an easy hookup. The place this happened is in a party city as I said, so unfortunately it's likely that this kind of thing happens all the time, and a lot of guys could be getting away with this type of behaviour. If you're ever in a situation like this and you feel like you can help someone in distress, please don't hesitate. If you don't feel comfortable approaching someone yourself, you can call the cops too. And if you're the victim in this situation, do your best to call out to passerbys for help. Also, always be aware of your surroundings and be safe. Make sure your friends and family know exactly where you are and who you're with as well. Because quite honestly, this girl was lucky. So I was on holidays with my family at my grandparents' house. I must have been 10 or 11 years old. But when me and my family go to our grandparents, we often aren't the only ones visiting too. But my uncles and their families often also visit my grandparents at the same time as us. So basically, I get to see my whole family. Because of that, it almost never happens as I'm home alone. But there was this one night where I got left home alone because of two emergencies. My grandmother and my aunt both had to go to hospital and my whole family went with them, except for me. I was sick so I told them that I wasn't feeling healthy enough to go for a one hour drive. My grandmother told me that the dog would keep me safe if something happened and got the whole family out of the house. After they left, I got on my PlayStation 2 and I played some racing games. I can't remember which one exactly, but after some time I heard my dog barking outside. At first I thought that she might be barking at the moon or something since she does that from time to time. After about 15 minutes I went outside to check up on her to see if she was maybe hungry or something. But she was right outside just barking at the living room that was next to the room that I was playing in. I tried to calm her down and get her some treats and water but she just kind of looked at me and let out a very small cry. After that she just kept barking at the living room. I just left her to do so since she didn't want to listen to me and I wasn't that bothered about it. I got back on my PlayStation and tried to get back in the zone, but after about 10 minutes or so I heard some really loud noises coming from the room next door and my dog stopped barking and just started crying out for me. I went outside to get him and check out what the hell was happening, but when I looked inside I saw something that made my heart stop almost. The couches were just flipped back or stood at random places where they shouldn't be. Chairs were broken, paintings on the ground and some of the light bulbs were completely shattered. Upon seeing this, I closed the door quickly and I ran into my grandparents' room waiting for them to get home. As soon as they got home, I tried to tell my mum what had happened but she just looked at me and told me that I'm in big trouble for what I've done with the place and that I'll never be left alone again. I tried to convince her that it wasn't me, but she just didn't want to listen to what I had to say. The weird thing is that my family never spoke to me about that night again, and I expected for someone to ask me why I messed up the living room or why I did what I did, but not a single person mentioned that night again. Which means that either they believed me and realized that a 10-year-old kid just wouldn't be able to mess up a room that bad, or they just were really mad at me and didn't want me to keep lying to them. So this happened last night. 
I, a 25 female, live alone in an apartment in a not very good part of my city. I was lying in bed just watching Criminal Minds when the phone to the door to my apartment complex rang. It's a locked door so visitors have to be let in and it rang four or five times. I wasn't really expecting anyone. It was about 10pm at this point so I didn't open the door or answer the door phone. I called my mum and I told her that I felt a bit scared. I have a history of abusive relationships and I've been diagnosed with PTSD. My mum told me that it was probably just a neighbour who forgot their key or something. But then I heard the elevator come up so I went to look through the peephole in my door. And I saw a man in dark clothes and a hoodie get out of the elevator and walk towards my door. Upon seeing this I freaked out and I told my mum who I still had on the phone. She told me to step away from the door so I went into my bedroom. And that was when the man started to pull on the door handle and then proceeded to pound on the door. I was really freaking out at this point, whispering to my mum what was happening. She told me to go and lock myself in the bathroom while she called the police on my sister's phone. The police told my mum to tell me to mute my phone and hang up the call with her so that they could call me. I did so and they called and they told me to stay locked in the bathroom and to just be quiet. At the same time, I could still hear the man trying to get in, and it was getting pretty violent out there now. The woman told me that a police patrol was only a couple of minutes away. I was in full-blown panic mode at this moment, and after what felt like forever, the woman on the phone told me that two police officers were outside my door, so I could go out from the bathroom and open the door for them. I was crying and hyperventilating and just a complete mess when they entered. One of the officers stayed with me in the apartment while the other searched the building. And unfortunately, they never found the man. So, here I am today, still freaked out, not knowing who this man was or what he wanted. But I sure hope that he doesn't come back, whoever he is. This happened 15 years ago when I was 19. At the time, I worked on a cargo vessel and this was my third trip to sea. But the ship was around 30 years old when I was on board, which doesn't sound old, but it's pretty old for a ship. The vessel had been refitted a few times by the time that I was on board as well. I won't say the name of the ship as I'll be naming people by position, so it would potentially lead to people being identified. For anyone who works in similar jobs though, you'll know that it's like being the young, relatively new guy on an all-male team with people who've lived and worked together for months or even years, and in essence you feel like a bit of an outsider and have to prove your worth, and also you can expect to have a load of practical jokes played on you. So, you can imagine when I joined this ship and the guys were all talking about a ghost on board, I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. They asked me if I believed in ghosts and I said no, which was actually a lie as I had experienced things before. But anyway, they basically just said something like, you will soon, and I just laughed it off. I think I'd been on board for about uh, maybe a week, I think, when I first heard a loud knock at the cabin door. I had my own cabin, but it was a small one in the middle of the accommodation with no porthole. So I opened the door and there was nobody there. I definitely thought that I was getting pranked and this started happening regularly and it would be at all sorts of times, often waking me up while I was sleeping with three loud knocks. And every time I tried to jump up and open the door as quickly as possible to catch the person but I never saw anyone or even heard them running away or anything. Now my cabin was roughly in the middle of a corridor, I'd say it was around 20 meters long so you'd have to run 10 meters to get around a corner. And a few times too, I honestly felt like I'd opened the door quick enough that I should have seen someone. This got me thinking though that maybe there was someone in a neighbouring cabin. I asked who was in the cabins next to mine. There was an old guy in one cabin who was in his 60s and I'd never seen him move fast enough. The others were empty. This is quite common in older ships as they used to get built to house more crew but ships sail with less and less crew these days. And so the knocking just continued. Until one day when I was at my wardrobe just hanging my shirt up, when literally I was right next to the cabin door when it knocked. I opened it so fast that I definitely should have been face to face with them. But when I did, the corridor was empty. I think that's when I realized too that 
There was something else going on here. After that, though, I started taking more notice of what other people were saying, and I also started paying attention to the oppressive feeling on board. I'd been on two ships previously, and I sailed on four, more after this one too, and none had an atmosphere like that. Things got worse after that too. Now, one of my jobs at night would be making rounds of the ship to check the cargo was secured, and there's no problems and whatnot. You take a radio with you so you can radio the bridge if you need to, and the radio would just sometimes loudly blast static for no reason. And if I radioed the officer on the bridge to ask if they said something, they would come back clear and say no, and there was no static for them. This happened with multiple radios, so it wasn't a dud as well. Now one day on my rounds, I was in the laundry at 2am just making checks, and an alarm sounded and I spun around to see the watertight door just closing behind me. I radioed the bridge and asked if they were closing it, which would be unusual as they only get operated in tests and emergencies. The second mate said no, and on his console it was showing open. But the door closed all the way, and the second mate radios to tell me to try and manually override, as he can't do it from the bridge, as it still says open. I use the lever to override and open the door. I radio to tell the mate, and he says he'll get it looked at by the engineer. I carry on with my rounds and as I approach the next door, the alarm sounds and it starts closing again. I radio the mate and he says he's not going to do anything and I'll just have to override again. But this time I get it open and as soon as it's fully open it starts to close again. I look around and the other door is also now closing. At this point, I'm getting shut into the laundry and I get this really weird feeling of just impending doom and it was right about that time when the lights begin to flicker and static just blasts straight over the radio i jump through the closing door a really bad idea because they can crush you and i just noped the hell out of there now theoretically that could all be a coincidence of failing systems or someone playing tricks the doors can be controlled from the bridge, but it's just not something someone would do as a prank since they can actually kill you. Also, when the door started closing, no one would have known that I was there. It was just me and the second mate and an engineer awake at the time, and there were no cameras. They did a full watertight door test the next day, and they also just found no faults. I should mention that watertight doors are each controlled by an independent system, so if one fails, they don't all fail, meaning that two doors experiencing faults together would be incredibly unlikely to say the least. After that though, I just never went into the laundry alone again. On another night, I did my late night rounds as usual and reported back up to the bridge when I finished, but when I got there, the second mate was white as a sheet and shaking. He was holding a cup of tea that was sloshing about from how much his hand was shaking and I asked if he was okay and he could barely speak. Finally, he managed to tell me that he was sat in front of the radar screen five minutes earlier when he heard me come back to the bridge. He asked if everything was okay and I didn't respond. He looked over his shoulder back at me but instead it was a, an old guy pale and wide-eyed just staring down at him from just arm's length away. He literally fell off his chair and the old guy just disappeared in front of his eyes. He said the worst thing was the expression of just malice on his face of this old guy as well. The second mate was weeping as he told me this as well and he was a pretty tough guy so I believed him. But the worst experience was definitely in my cabin. So I'd been on board maybe three months by this point and had kind of accepted that I was stuck on this messed up ship. I guess some of the fear had gone as you get used to being on edge like that eventually and I ignored my door knocking by this point. It might have even stopped happening, I can't really recall, but anyway, I get into bed one night, read for a bit and I turn the light off. As soon as I turn the light off though, I think I see a figure stood over the bed, but... It's pretty much pitch black, so I can't make out any detail, and after initially jumping, I reprimand myself for being silly and assume it's just my eyes adjusting. But then, the figure sits down on the bed, squashing my legs and turning its head towards me. 
Now, I can literally hear you guys screaming sleep paralysis at me right now, but I've experienced it before and I can tell you that this wasn't that. I could move my arms and my upper body just fine and I could move my feet, but my lower legs were trapped by the weight of something. I was frantically pulling at the blankets to try and dislodge this thing and get my legs out, but it was just impossible. I tried to reach for the light switch, but it was just a couple of inches out of reach. I started full on swinging at the space where it should be sat, but my hands just didn't hit anything. I started screaming at this thing over and over again to get off me, and eventually the figure stood up and I could move my legs again. I hit the light and when I did, there was nothing there. I'll be honest with you guys too, that I couldn't sleep without copious amounts of alcohol and a nightlight after that, and even for a bit after I left the ship, which, as you can imagine, was awesome for picking up girls in my early 20s. Hey, wanna come around and stay over? Excuse me while I get myself plastered and turn my nightlight on. Multiple other things happened after this too, but this is already getting pretty long, so I'll skip ahead to the last big thing with multiple witnesses. So when I'd been in that ship about five months, me and the night watch were in the crew bar after our watch finished, probably at about 4am. I was about to begin my routine of getting so drunk that I'd pass out and not care if a ghost sat on me or whatever basically. We were talking about some of the weird stuff that we'd seen on board. It was me, the second mate, the second engineer and a grease monkey, engineer lackey basically, and as we were talking, one of the guys looks across the bar and says, what the hell? And his mouth is open like an O, and we all look where he's looking, and a Henry Hoover is just floating, about two foot off the floor with its stupid smiley face just looking at us. The second mate just swears in like an incredulous manner, and the Hoover gets thrown a few feet off to the left instead of just getting dropped. Obviously, we called it a short night after that one. When I was maybe six or seven, my mum had forgotten to pick me up after school one day. This was actually pretty normal, so I just started walking home by myself. It was maybe a, an hour long walk in the Florida heat, and because I'm so little, I'm pretty much instantly wishing that I had arrived. Once I get to the part of my walk that starts taking me through neighborhoods, I notice a car slowing down and pulling up to me. The window rolls down, and I can see an older man... In my memory, his face is literally hidden in a shadow, and a kid, maybe 9 or 12, I'm not really sure. I remember thinking that he was a pretty big kid, and the kid leans over and starts talking to me. I can remember him clear as day, dark brown hair that hung over his eyes, but was neatly trimmed like he'd just gotten a haircut. Brown eyes, brown jacket, with his backpack by his feet, and a striped shirt. Hey, uh, do you want a ride? He asked, the kid, not the driver. I nodded and climbed off the wall that I was balancing on. I remember thinking, it's okay because there's another kid. But when I took a step to get off the curb, something just stopped me. It was like someone made a fist around my heart and just squeezed. My chest was tight and I had the overwhelming instinct to not get in that car, that is. I shook my head no and I just kept walking. The car followed me for a bit, so I started cutting between trailers and staying away from the roads. I eventually lost the car and I made it home safely. Maybe a week or two later, I'm not really sure, you know how hard it is to remember time when you're that young, but my mum and her boyfriend are high just passed out with the news on. I'm playing with my dolls and I look up to see the news anchor talking about a missing little girl about my age. And... I just remember instantly thinking about that car and the kid. I wanted to tell an adult, but my mum was always either high or never around, so I waited another week before I told a neighbour and she called the police. I told them everything that I knew until my mum picked me up and took me home. Unfortunately, the little girl died. I don't remember her name, but I remember my mum talking about it and bragging that her kids were too smart to get taken. It made me feel really bad to hear her talk that way as well. I don't know if they ever caught who did it, and I don't even know if it was the man and that kid, but whoever it was, I hope someday that they're brought to justice.
This was around a year ago in July of 2018. So I was on a trip to Goa in India with some of my friends and we were on this rented yacht in the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean for the night. A lot of us were drunk as hell, except for me. I stayed away from the bottles that day because of a bet with a friend. He bet me $20 that I couldn't go two vacation days without drinking or smoking. Early on in the night, some of my more intoxicated friends decided to look out the vast sea and yelled excitedly that they'd seen mermaids around us, which turned out to be dugongs, marine mammals commonly mistaken for mermaids. This was at around 11.30 or 12 at night, and I helped get them back inside with the others. The party had died down by around 2 or 3 in the morning, and I decided to enjoy the view of the sea with a good old late night snack, a pack of barbecue Lay's chips. I was about halfway through the pack too when I noticed these strange human-like figures coming up out of the water and I, assuming that these were the mermaids seen by my drunk friends, decided to go and get a closer look. But then they formed what I think was a circle around the boat and they drew closer. And now I could tell that they had long dark hair. It was a moonlit night and that they had grayish white faces. They didn't rise very far above the water, but I could only see their shoulders at most. I began to assume that they were somewhat ugly mermaids in poor lighting or something, and I tried waving to them, to which they all stared in my direction. They began to emit what I now feel was the most ghastly wailing that I had ever heard. But the strange thing is that it was oddly mesmerizing, and as I inched closer to the railing... I felt just a, a strong urge to join them in the water, but I started to back away when I saw their eyes. They had no irises or any white, and they were just completely black. Their mouths seemed to grow in size, and that was when my eyes convinced my ears to not give in. I dropped my chips, and I pulled away from the railing and fought my urges to jump over, and I just ran inside, shutting the door behind me and falling to the ground. Everyone else was asleep and the wailing just stopped abruptly as soon as I went inside. And I was far too afraid to go back outside, so I decided to just lose the bet and have a fairly good amount of Henry and rum, plus half a blunt that my friends had left. I eventually passed out and the next morning no one was missing, so that was good. But when I told everyone, no one believed me and we had to head back to the hotel in the afternoon. About a year ago, I went on a trip up north to go camping. I needed a break from everyday life and some me time. But the woods weren't small or a popular camping spot and I was full on prepared to just rough it. All I brought with me was the necessary provisions like my tent, a set of matches, a lighter, my Swiss army knife, a flashlight and a few other knickknacks that weren't meant to last me the weekend. I set up camp, not far from a stream that led up to the main highway, and decided to go and take a look around the woods, get a sense of the wildlife and all. And around an hour or so later, I came across this cave that kind of dipped into the ground. I decided to take out my flashlight and shine a light into the cave to see what was in there. After doing that, I noticed that after the cave dipped down, it seemed to form some sort of a passageway. There also seemed to be marks that resembled scratches on the walls from where I was looking down, so I thought maybe some sort of animal lived in it, maybe a bear? But I stupidly decided to take a look inside, and as I crouched down into the cave and started walking, semi-crouching for a bit, I walked inside it until the wall seemed to have gotten more apart, thus giving more room for movement. The cave was pretty dark aside from the light from my flashlight too and as I walked in the cave for no more than around 5 or 10 minutes, I kind of lost track of time though for a bit so it's just an estimate. I began to hear some sort of scurrying. At that point I was kind of too scared to keep going so I turned around and I headed back in the direction that I came. But as soon as I began climbing out, I kid you not, I heard something running behind me. Not natural running either, because whatever it was, was running on all fours. But it was definitely too light to be a bear and not heavy enough to be anything smaller than a wolf, but the scraping sounds that it made while running did not resemble a wolf at all. At that point, I just kind of booked it out and I ran straight from my campsite. 
Aside from the rest of the forest, my camp was in a well enough lit area and just shy of the wooded area near the stream, as I mentioned before. But just as I left the wooded area too, the running just seemed to stop. Too paranoid though, I kept an eye on the woods that night and I didn't see anything definitive, but from the corner of my eye, I could have sworn that I saw what resembled a humanoid figure standing around six to seven feet tall. It was thin and somewhat hairless. I don't really know how to describe it because I didn't really get a good look, but as I blinked, it was gone. I then decided to grab my stuff and I headed to my car, which I had parked in my campsite and drove back onto the main highway via a road that cut through the woods, still following the river. I must admit though that I was still pretty terrified, especially when it felt as if my bumper had hit something when I made one of the turns onto the highway, but at the same time I brushed it off as all just being my nerves and I was a bit unsettled. After I had made the long drive home, I decided to settle down and take a moment to collect myself. When it was time for bed, I found it really hard to sleep because I was pretty scared, but eventually I just kind of drifted off. At least until the creaking began. Ever since that day for the next month at night, I've been hearing this creaking noise. The sound of steps or movement or something. But the worst is the sound of scratching made across my walls as if something is dragging its nails on them. I didn't know what to do, but... Whatever came back with me didn't just want to kill me. It honestly seems like it's trying to toy with me, savoring me maybe. Obviously, I was terrified. Terrified that one day, it'll have had enough of just playing with me. Within that month, I also received the unfortunate news that my mother had passed and actually left the house to me. And despite how sad it made me, I will admit that a part of me was relieved. I put my house up on the market and I went back to my childhood home and from my contact with the agent in charge of my old house, I know that it's been sold by now. It's been a few months and there was no sign of this thing until last night. Because last night, I heard the scraping coming from downstairs and I was so scared that I couldn't go to sleep. I really don't know what this is and I have no clue as to what to do next, but... If any of you guys have any ideas, I would love some help right now. Two summers ago, I was living in a pretty small town with less than 40,000 people. It's where I'm from and where I feel most comfortable. I lived with my boyfriend at the time, our two kids and two Rottweilers as well. So, my boyfriend would leave a few hours earlier than I did in the mornings, and since we lived right across the street from the elementary school, the kids would just walk to school. But one morning after the kids and my boyfriend had left, I was upstairs showering, and I heard my two Rottweilers just going nuts downstairs. But they were both in kennels, and I could hear them just going crazy barking and jumping around in the kennels, just making a ton of noise. I then hear footsteps coming up the stairs, and... I was immediately alarmed because, again, this is a pretty small town where I grew up and while it wasn't common for my boyfriend or the kids to come back home, it wasn't beyond comprehension to think that maybe one of them had forgotten something and had to come back to the house. But the dogs were really losing their minds and it then occurred to me that the dogs don't act like that with the kids or my boyfriend. They'd only really act like that to a stranger. So I open the shower curtain, lean out and yell, what the hell is going on down there? And I hear the footsteps stop. Then seemingly turn around, run back down the stairs and the door slam hard. I was super confused at this point. So I hopped out of the shower in a towel and walked down the stairs to find my front door wide open with the deadbolt in a locked position. So to me, it looked like someone tried to lock it, must have panicked or something, slammed the door and just ran, and I guess just didn't notice the door didn't actually close because the deadbolt was out. I peered out the door and didn't see anything, so I just kind of closed the door and locked it and texted my boyfriend asking if he had stopped at the house, and he said that he had it. I checked on the dogs and they were fine, but super high energy and eager to get out of the kennels. I was perplexed. Still not that concerned for some reason and just finished getting ready and went to work and didn't think much about it after that. 
While I was at work, a family friend stopped in whose kids attended the same school as ours did. And she asks me if I heard that they had put the school in lockdown for two or three hours that morning. And I had it. She proceeds to tell me too that some guy stabbed somebody to death and was loose in our neighborhood and since we live right by the elementary school and they couldn't find the guy, they put the whole school on lockdown. And at that point, every hair in my body just stood on end. I am now absolutely certain that this guy was in my home earlier that day attempting to hide from the police. But we didn't always lock our doors so... He was able to just walk in and he probably wasn't perturbed by my dog since they were both kenneled but I'm almost positive that it was him in my house that day. I'm also pretty certain that if I hadn't have yelled out from the shower that he would have come upstairs and who knows what would have happened at that stage. Oh and uh, they did end up catching this guy hiding under a house in my neighborhood only a few hours after this. I have no recollection of this, but I remember part of my life before and after this story, but I have no memory of my life living in this actual house. But this story I know from what my mum and my siblings have told me. So back when I was about four or five years old, me and my family went to live from Buenos Aires to Saltillo, Mexico. My father had actually just got a big promotion, so he bought a big three-story house for us. Beautiful and antique as well. And as soon as we moved into that house, I told my mother that I had met five boys who were now my friends. As a kid with an active imagination, my mum didn't think much of it. Later on though was when she started noticing just strange behaviour from my part and my friends. The first thing that she noticed was that my friends were not allowed to come down from the second floor. I would spend hours begging them to please come down and play with me on the first floor living room and I would tell my mum that they couldn't or they just would get in trouble with the man in the black hat. And after a few more months of this, things started getting even stranger. My mum would sometimes hear children laughing and footsteps on the top floor and it was at this point that she assumed that maybe my imaginary friends were not as imaginary as she first thought. One night, when my father was out of town, I went to sleep with my mum on her bed. Around the middle of the night, I woke her up to tell her that my friends had gotten angry with me. That they were really angry and that they wanted to hurt me. Apparently, I was screaming at my mum to please help me. I was crying, telling her to please help me because they wanted to take me. I was screaming that they were coming for me, that they sent the man in the black hat. Please, I don't want to go and... And my mum told me that she grabbed me tight, closed her eyes and prayed for me just to fall asleep and shut up. But I didn't and I was telling her to look out the window and see the man, look at his red eyes. Ten minutes passed and I was no longer crying. I calmly told her that the man was now in the hallway and that I would be going with him. She went and locked the bedroom door and held me tight with her hand on my mouth and closed her eyes until eventually I just drifted off to sleep. Unfortunately for her, she didn't sleep until daytime, but that morning she called my father and told him that she could no longer live in that house. It took two months for us to find a new place to live, but as soon as I left that house, I no longer talked about my friends and apparently just forgot all about them. There are many stories of other things that happened during our stay at that house, but I just wanted to tell you guys that one because it was definitely the most intense for my entire family and me. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you would like to help me out, then please go ahead and watch another video by clicking on a card on the screen. As always guys, thanks for all the love and support and I'll see you mates in the next one.